Welcome to another unit in this Excel course. This time I'm going to talk about how we can generate and interpret so-called spider web plots or if we take a look at the Excel corresponding to this, that's the things here, the so-called surfaces or radar charts. I'm going to do this first off here for those two data sets. That's basically different marks and exams. And the idea would be that I compare those two exams. So I want to get an overview in how far one of them might be better, might be worse than another one. So I can do this as well if I get, for example, for different types of tests, results, so personality tests versus IQ tests and stuff like this, or if I compare different groups of people. So for all the comparison's sake, I can use this. The advantage is I can use this for quite a lot of dimensions. So here I would have more or less 19 people, so 19 dimensions. If I have different groups, I can do this for a lot of different groups at once. So the, basically the important is just to get an idea what is to be compared. So here it's the exams which should be compared and those are the corresponding dimensions to compare them with. If I were to compare those people here, then I would only have two dimensions. Oh, well, okay, in this case, um, surface or radar shot wouldn't be the best choice to go with. However, here I want to compare the exams, so that's what I'm going to use them for in this context. So if I select those ones, I can click on my surface part, then I see different versions to go with and I, well, don't want to go into the surface part because this, as you see, might look a bit strange. I want to go instead here on the radar charts. Radar charts, which I can do with outlines, that's this version, or here with filled in forms. Filled in forms, you directly see the problem. This only makes sense if one of them is actually smaller than the other. So the best way is always go with this typical radar charts. If I click on this, I get this here. So I get basically for all of the 19 participants, all of the 19 people, an evaluation of the overall exams. So each outline describes one of the exams. And I see some people are way better in exam one than the other exam. Some people there it's exactly opposite, but most of them are relatively close to each other. So, well, this looks nice, but here I have like one to 19. Maybe I want to assign it specific names. So I can do this again with the select data, then with horizontal category access part. So here I can select the corresponding names. Then I have the different names for each of those parts. Okay, this might also look a bit strange. So let's do a different example with this as well. So for example, I have two people. So let's take Bob and Bill, and they do different types of tests. So they'll do like a psychological exam, they do a physical, they do an IQ test, and let's say, how can I call this? Let's call this mental stability. and perhaps something like robustness. It's just to give you different things to consider here. So that's different tests they take. And I want to know how Bob compares to Bill. So I take their test results. Imagine this is always like different parts, Oops, sorry. different um, exams, all of them between zero and 100 points. So 
So if I go with this, I now can compare Bob and Bill and how they compare with regard to the two tests. So if I select this, again, go to insert here to the radar charts. That's then my radar chart for this. Then I see Bob is clearly better in the physical department. Bill, uh, Bill, no, sorry, Bill is better in the physical department. Bob is better in the IQ department. In all the other three departments, they are more or less the same. So I could do this for additional people as well. And then always compare them with multidimensional tests. So this could also be if I have an exam, if I have like exercise one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, something. And then I compare the different students. Which students, for example, always have small values in the first one, which always have large values in the first one. Is there one student who is like different than all the others? Do they all behave similarly? If I want to do this in a multidimensional context, that's actually the way to go. There's like the big advantage in using these radar charts. And well, that's then already everything I wanted to tell you about in the context of radar charts. So they're a really nice comparative tool when working with multidimensional objects. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something from this unit. And if you want to see more on this type of, well, let's call this Excel videos or illustrating diagrams in Excel, feel free to visit the rest of this course or have a look in the corresponding playlist. I say goodbye and see you next time.